Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Honorable judges, respected officers of SECP, respected members of the bar, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. I'm afraid I have nothing to tell you which you, all of you already do not know. The topic being company benches and conduct of liquidation. So I would still try to share a few thoughts, rambling thoughts that I jotted down in the short time I had after I finished court today. So since it's about the conduct of litigation, we take it that the winding up order has already been passed and liquidation has com commenced. It is less about the law and more about the administration and conduct of the liquidation process itself. It is not top heavy. All of you have seen uh, the, the relevant provisions of the law. The court's role is that only of a supervisory role uh, in the background and you let the liquid liquidator conduct the liquidation, take it forward, obtain the requisite directions from the court as and when required and bring it to a close. Uh, paradoxically, we are in Islamabad, but we have only seven active liquidations going on right now. That's what I checked from the office. There's not a lot, lot of business here on, on, on liquidation side. Um, but what was concerning was that some of those liquidations have been pending since 2011. Why is that the case? Perhaps a diagnostic can be carried out, as just pointed out by Mr. Muro the whole idea of liquidation being to free up the assets locked into an enterprise that has been found fit to be wound up, to release them, re-enter the market, and really the, the purpose is lost if those assets are realized eight or ten years down the road. I've had only one liquidation that I brought to close as a judge, uh, had two hearings for that. The liquidator's report was there for about last almost a year. And it was surprising why it hadn't been closed by that time. Um, the first and foremost factor that I can say is, as was pointed out earlier, that liquidation is uh, considered to be a run-of-the-mill exercise. It is not. You have to have professionals, uh, and the minimal requirement would be for them to be financially literate. If I may be allowed to say, at some point in time, the appointment of a liquidator was considered to be a largesse conferred by the judge on one of the lawyers who would then get along, uh, take his time in bringing it to a close with absolutely no idea, of, they can't even read a balance sheet. So that has to stop. I think SCCP needs to ensure that our, I think the requirement under the law is uh, with experience in finance, accounting and law, the finance and accounting fine, but the lawyers who are appointed must have financial literacy qualified for that. Um, that would exclude me, of course, in that respect. But then the, there is a lot of liability attached to the liquidators. They have to act extremely responsibly. There's personal liability also. They have to maintain the accounts, run the business, and bring it to a beneficial winding up. Uh, admit, reject claims, assess uh, w make all these assessments, custody of the company's assets, and they have to defend and initiate proceedings. So it's a lot of responsibility, which takes us to the question of their remuneration. Um, it is, I, d I did some back of the envelope cal calculations, and in the winding up that was brought to me, I, I was sh that the real, the, what the liquidator would realize would be one over eight percent of any sum above one above fifty million rupees. So this liquidator had realized or 
it was possible for him to realize and he was waiting from, uh, for a nod from the court for the last one year to go ahead, which was given to him in one hearing. Uh, he, he was able to realize about 30 million rupees and under the company court rules, his remuneration was 78,000 rupees. Now, no self-respecting professional is going to dedicate their time and resources doing for doing this and worldwide the liquidators are well remunerated for not just the amount of work they have to do but also the amount of responsibility they have to carry so this needs to be addressed immediately uh, the so i did the some back of the envelope calculations and as and, and as calculated and i may be wrong but it seemed like if he were to realize 100 million rupees his take home would be 125,000 rupees. So it's just simply out of sync altogether. Um, has to be market-based. Then the time to, be com to complete liquidation is to be specified by the court in the winding up order. And it's rarely done. As I, I don't think I have seen an order yet where at the time of passing up the winding up order, the, the, the company bench actually directs that this winding up has to be brought to a close in this given period. And uh, that is something that uh, I may uh, judge has to pass that order in view of the complexity of the liquidation uh, exercise. Large company, the, the judge would obviously hear submissions from the liquidator himself before judge. And this is another thing, the liquidator is just appointed and that's the end of it. The court looks from the panel and just says, this, this chap looks decent enough, so let's, let's appoint him. But I, I should imagine that before appointing, the court might want the liquidator to make an assessment of the exercise to be carried out and uh, uh, and the time that it would take the liquidator and, and then not only appoint him but also give past directions as to how, what is the time frame that, that should take to bring the liquidation to a close. Um, another thing linked with that is that as we all know that liquidations and winding up petitions are run in the same style as writ petitions. It is not meant to be that way, you know. Yeah, has to follow a completely different style and pattern, but that is not the topic I am meant to be addressing today. Um, so a liquidator's report gets filed, the normal um, listing period for every next date is usually a month, month and a half. That day, maybe the case may be left over uh, in another. So by the time that liquidator's report comes up for the judge to take a look at, it could have been three, four, six months for the report that it would have taken the judge 10 minutes to dispose of. And in that respect, as was pointed out by Ifkhar um, Chaudhary, um, his lordship, that the, if it is to be done, then you can't, you have to give more time to the company judges on a dedicated basis. And on a lighter note, the trend has risen for the company cases to be listed at the at the end of the list and i've made an attempt to call my call the staff and say please list them at the top that it is required to be but i do not know why uh, despite the direct uh, the statutory command for them to be uh, decided in a summary manner for some historic reasons the list always the, the company cases are always at the end of the list and you can always see all the company lawyers sitting there bored and waiting for when, when the court will end because they know their case won't be called. Uh, that needs to also change for liquidations to become more efficient and, and effective. And two points that uh, I'd say a few words and I'll close. There is also a bit of paranoia at the, with all due respect, at the SECP's side in, the, in respect that in the only order that I've written in this, I, they, I had to wind it up quickly, so I just wrote a short order, is what is the standard of liquidators' duties and powers? You know, what is that? It has to be a standard of any other reasonable person who is appointed by the court to act as the court's officer, 
But there is a bit of a paranoia because just to tell you what happened there was that this company was wound up, uh, ceased to exist more than 15 years ago. The liquidator wrote dozens of letters to all the banks, um, to the state bank, and he was trying to trace down two of the directors to get their, sta their statements. And he wrote in his report that they are not traceable, and yet the, the, the comment from the SCCP was that he should make all out efforts to find those person. So I obviously dismissed that, that comment. And then the standard is that he is supposed to only, uh, he's not meant to go on a fishing expedition. He is meant to um, ascertain whatever is reasonably ascertainable. Um, on the basis of the books, reasonable inspections of the premises, but he's not meant to sort of look at under every nook and cranny everywhere to make sure that he finds out the last penny to bring it to a realization. And, and that needs to, uh, with all due respect uh, to, to ACCP, they need to look at this, that to what extent when the court asks them their comments on the liquidator's report, to what extent they can shoulder the responsibility and say, this is fine, you know, he has done what he can, and we are okay with it. That makes the company judge's task easy. Otherwise, when the regulator himself is saying that they are not satisfied with the liquidator's job, when the, then, then it's not that easy for the court to dismiss it outright. And uh, uh, this is about it. I mean, I, I, shan't, I won't have anything more to say. Thank you very much for all this. Thank you very much.